Chapter 47 The Announcements That night over dinner, Sam brought up what V had said. She's been volunteering at the Haven, cutting kids' hair, he started. But the way she talked, it sounded so different from the last time we were there. Luca wasn't working that night, and Annika had joined us for the first time in days, although she only picked at the knocky that Pop gave her. She's going there again tomorrow, I cut in. I thought maybe we'd ask if she could take us with her. No, Luca said quick and hard. I blinked at him. But why not? You let me and Sam go before. Because I'm saying no now. Sam and I looked at each other and tried again. But I want to... Pop started to say, Fred, leave it. But Luca cut him off before he could finish. You don't want to see, he snapped. And even Annika jumped a bit at the crack of his words. There was silence around the dinner table. Except for the sound of Luca's fork, scraping the bottom of his bowl. He shook his head. We're in September now, and the November deadline is fast approaching. The Haven is... different. What do you mean, different? Pop asked. I frowned and added... Plus, you said people were talking about changing the deadline, letting them stay longer. It's not happening, Luca snapped. And we've been getting reports at the station of the Haven kids acting out, skipping class and taking the day off school and who knows where. Why would they do that? Sam asked quietly. Luca scraped his chair back and took his empty bowl to the sink. Luca! Annika's voice was soft and a little croaky. And I realised that she hadn't spoken to us in such a long time. What do the kids say when you speak to them? What do their parents think? He kept his back to us, and it was only when Annika said his name again Luca. that he turned around, drying his hands on the tea towel. I've stopped volunteering there. What? Since when? And then she took a deep breath, and her eyes went a little glassy as she asked. Not because of Drumlin. It was the first time I'd heard her say his name since Luca went. No, no, he said. I stopped when they started the announcements. He took a deep breath as we all stared at him. They have these speakers all around the Haven to make announcements. Since the first week of September, they've been broadcasting this message. And he threw the tea towel behind him, crossing his arms and continued. Every hour during the day, they play their recorded message in Albanian. A voice telling them it's safe to go home. Saying peace has been restored. Australia can't help them anymore. And encouraging them to come forward and sign consent forms, allowing our government to send them back. Jeez, Pop whispered. Some of the elderly didn't really want to know what was happening. They just blindly followed the instructions, went to the front office and signed a bunch of papers, and were shipped home within days. They, they didn't know, didn't have a clue what it really meant, what they were signing away. My heart was lodged in my throat and I could taste it like metal. I wondered if Nora had signed those papers, if she'd already been sent home to a house of rubble and a country torn apart, and what that meant for her baby. Why, why would our government do that to them? I asked. They want them gone, Lucas said. They play that message every day? Annika asked, and Luca nodded. Like clockwork. In the rec rooms and dining area, the computer labs we set up in their dorm rooms, every hour on the hour, and the kids hear it. At the word kids, Luca's voice seemed to crack, telling them to go home, that we can't help them anymore. Meanwhile, their parents are scared out of their minds, hearing stories from home that soldiers are still all around, and entire cities have been bombed out. That's why you won't go back there anymore, Pop asked, and Luca nodded. How can you do that? I whispered. Luca rubbed a hand over his face. I gave my time there, and now it's all wrapping up and there's nothing to be done. It's meant to be a haven, I said. There's a port in the storm, a place to stay that's safe, and they're making them go away? Those who have a reason to stay will, Luca said, and then he raised his hand before I could speak again. I'm sorry that you feel that way, Winifred, but there's nothing we can do. Trust me, we tried. I shook my head. Annika, I said, and she looked at me with those sad eyes. You said that we have two hands, one to help ourselves and one to help others, so why can't we... Stop! Luca snapped, louder than I think he meant to. He rubbed his face again. In case you haven't noticed, we can barely help ourselves right now. My eyes began to water and Sam fidgeted nervously in the seat next to me. There is just too much tragedy and awfulness in this whole world, Winifred. And some of it's just too big to bear if we don't have to. He came to me, then cupped the back of my head with one of his big hands. He bent down to kiss my forehead. When his hand fell away, he said, We're done here. Mm -hmm.